So I just passed my first attempt at the EJPT exam. You might be wondering, hey, I want to be a lead hacker too. How can I do that? Well, in this video, we're going to break that down. We'll make a plan together from the tips and tricks that I did that are tried and tested ways to pass on your first attempt. First, we'll need an overarching goal, a target, something to aim at. And secondly, we'll need the essential five ingredients that I followed to be able to pass on my first attempt. So let's get cracking. The goal of the EJPT, your goal. This is the goal that will help you crush the exam. My question for you, what is that goal? Have a think about it. Now, if you thought to pass the exam, well, you're wrong. That's not the goal. The goal isn't to pass the exam. The, the goal isn't to get a shiny cert. The goal is to learn because learning is greater than passing. Get the passing idea out of your head. What we need to first do is set our sights on the idea that we want to learn something new. We want to actually learn from this course and set out with that attitude, with that mentality in mind. I don't want you going into this thinking all I want to do is get this funky shiny cert. You need to go into it thinking I want to learn something. I want to grow. I want to become better as a hacker. I want to start my journey as a hacker. Show up with an attitude to learn and grow. And this personally helped me get the right mindset as I went into the exam. I didn't go into the exam with the goal to pass. I went into the exam with the goal to learn. That e I knew that even if I did fail, that I would learn something from the experience. And that's the major goal. The goal is to learn. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's look at the five tips that I have for you to be able to crush this exam. Tip number one is to take notes. As you go through the course, take as many notes as possible about the labs, from the videos, anything and everything that you can take a note of, make sure you're taking those notes. Make sure that they are easy to access for the exam because you will need to use your notes in the exam. And this goes for the exam too. Make sure that you are taking good notes during your exam. Even though most of the questions are multiple choice, and there are some questions that you got to fill in the blank answers. It's good to take notes just in case for two reasons. <clears throat> One, just in case you need to reset the lab environment, everything gets lost if you reset it. And number two is to make sure that you actually have a record of what kind of things were on the machine to kind of be able to step back and have a look at, you know, what you've, you've looked at previously, what you may need to look at during the rest of the exam but also to be able to go back and look over post exam. If you do fail, then you'll be able to have a look at the things that you may have missed and kind of get a better picture. But if you don't fail, then you'll be able to look back in pride and say, yes, look at all the work that I did and what I accomplished and the notes prove that. Tip number two, do all of the labs, some of them twice. So the course is designed to teach you all that you need to know. If you just do the course, you'll be able to pass the exam. It has all of the components, all of the techniques that you will use within the exam, you won't really need to go beyond what is provided in the course. And the labs are a great demonstration of this. The labs really provide a really good picture of what the exam environment is meant to look like. Now, one thing that I didn't realize that I didn't so much put into words before I did the exam as much as I did afterwards, is my advice is when you're doing the labs, make sure you focus more on the techniques rather than the exploits. I got caught up in, we're repeating the same exploits, we're repeating the same exploits. That's really annoying. Let's, let's try something new. Let's try something new. Throughout the whole course, we exploited Bad Blue, we exploited VSFDPD, we exploited Regetto server. The same three vulnerabilities kind of popped up everywhere. But I think that at the heart of it, and I think that's at the heart of the learning goal, is to make sure that you are focusing more on the techniques than the actual exploits. That will make you a better hacker in the long run, but it will also make you more effective for the exam. And once you finish the course, once you're almost ready to take the exam, I would recommend to go back and refresh yourself. You may not need to watch the videos again. You may not need to do every single lab again, but I would just go back and go, what do I think I need refreshing on? What kind of techniques, what kind of things that I'm not really sure about? And I would go and revisit those. And that's kind of what I did. I went back and I looked at the pivoting, pivoting labs. 
I looked at um, understanding reverse and bind shells again. I looked at the black box penetration tests that we did. I would recommend doing those twice at least, giving myself mission to be able to really learn the content, really learn so that I can then walk into the exam with confidence that I actually know mainly what I'm doing. Now, if you don't feel like this is enough, I would recommend three rooms in TriHackMe. I don't think you really need to go any further. Now, these three rooms are really great because they actually take you through the pen testing methodology. And I think that that's more important in terms of the EJPT exam because the EJPT doesn't treat the exam environment like a CTF. You're not going in there to look for a root flag or a user flag. You're going in there to perform a penetration test. You want to understand what vulnerabilities there are. You want to understand what attack vectors there are, what services there are. And those are the kind of questions you're answering to be able to pass. The three rooms that I would recommend from Try Hack Me are Blue, Ice and Blaster. Those three rooms really go over those concepts. And I think that that's more important than doing a whole bunch of different rooms and trying different uh, complicated attacks. Exam is designed to be beginner friendly. It's not designed to be very difficult. It is hard. I'm not saying that it's not, but it's just challenging enough that if you'd done the coursework, if you'd learnt from the labs, then you should be able to work it out. You should be able to press through and get through it. And this kind of leads me to tip number three is focus on methodology and not exploitation. Again, this is not a CTF. It is a penetration test. We're wanting to emulate what a penetration test would look like. The goal is to then understand the machines that you're, you're hacking into and to understand the vulnerabilities that exists on those machines. We want to explore different attack vectors. We don't just want to stop it one and get shell and that's it. We want to actually explore the file system. We want to know what's on these machines, what possible privilege escalation vectors there are, what possible persistence vectors there are, and, and those kind of different attack scenarios in order to be able to provide a client a good picture of like what is on their machine. The goal is more about the methodology rather than the exploitation. So make sure that you're following the steps. Make sure you're going through enumeration, then information gathering, then exploitation, then post-exploitation. Make sure you're going through that cycle over and over again as you're going through each box, each machine that's on the network. Make sure you're not getting distracted and make sure you're just following the steps. The next step for you to follow is to tap the like button. Tip number four is to use Hacktrix. Now, if you've never heard of Hacktrix before, Hacktrix is a Git book designed by this guy. Thank you, guy. It's a great pen tester resource. Basically what it is, it's like a massive cheat sheet that covers all kinds of services that run on all kinds of ports, and it shows you different techniques to exploit, to enumerate, to brute force, those kinds of things. It shows you uh, the different variations, uh, of attacks and and that kind of stuff and I find a really great resource to use during a penetration test or when I go through a box on hack the box or or any of those kind of challenges and I found it a really great use in the exam I consulted it a couple of times when I felt like I was stuck and I didn't know whether I'd tried enough whether I'd tried as much as I could and so I would go and consult hat tricks and to see what else I could do. If there was something that I'd miss that maybe I hadn't taken no note of earlier in the course that that was present in Hacktricks, it should be covered there. So pretty much anything that there is to know, you'll find it in Hacktricks. And tip number five is have fun. Take a breath. Have fun. Remember the goal. The goal is to learn. The goal is to come away a better person. The goal is to learn something and grow in your skills, grow in your aptitude and enjoy the process. Remember why you started down this hacking journey. You didn't start down because you had to. You started down because you enjoyed it. So have fun with the exam. I found it fun. At the start, I was a teeny bit stressed because I wasn't sure what I was in for, but an hour in, I was having the time of my life. So enjoy it. Don't let anxiety take over. Don't let the nerves take over. Just go into it just for fun. So that's my, my final tip, have fun. Let that underlie the attitude of learning and of growth that you're going to go into this exam. And I assure you, if 
If you go in with that attitude, you will be relaxed, you'll think more clearly, and you will be able to crush this exam. There you have it, my five secret ingredients to crushing the EJPT. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if you have any suggestions for future videos. I hope this video has been helpful to you and that you have a really great week. See you next time.